our social studies book that we are going to be in on today. We are going to start on pages 8 and we'll go all the way to page 11. On today 1 through 7 is just an intro to our book so you can kind of skip through those pages. Our first lesson on today will begin again on page 8. Before we get into the book, let's go ahead and review our country. The name of our country is the United States of America. Sometimes we call it the USA, sometimes we call it America. Either way it go, it's all the same thing, but the full name is the United States of America. That's the country that we live in. Inside of the United States of America, we have 50 states, 50 states total. America began with 13 states, and over time, as people began to travel west and discover new land in the west, more and more states were founded, and now we are at 50 states. That's where we've been. For a long time and that's where we'll probably stay because there's nowhere else to make land. The cool thing about online learning is that we have students from different states. These are the list of states that we have students from in our class. We have students from Louisiana, South Carolina, New York, Georgia, and California. How awesome is that? That we can be in different parts of the country all together as one. Our country is the United States of America and everyone has a different state that they are from. Inside of your state, you have what's called your city, the city that you live in. I'm from Louisiana and the city that I live in is called Lafayette. So it's important to know not only your country, not only the state, but also to know the name of your city. There are three different things, country, city, I'm sorry, country, state, then city. Okay, so if you don't know the city you live in, ask your parents to help you out with that. If you do know it, awesome, that will be a test question on next week. What country, what state, and what city you live in. It's three different things. Let's go ahead and open our books to page eight, and we will discuss what's called America's freedoms. We live in this country called America, and in America, there are a list of freedoms that we have. Freedom is another word for liberty, meaning we are able to freely do something. There is no one can stop us from doing this thing that we have the freedom to do. We can do it on our own. So we have four of them that we will talk about, but there are also more freedoms, but we will only discuss four of them. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one, which is called the freedom of speech. I will not read the book. You can do that on your own, especially next week when you're reviewing for the test on next week. You will read the pages, but I will just kind of just do a brief summary of the lesson. Whenever we say the freedom of speech, we are saying we are free to say what we want. Speech, whenever you say the word speech, it means to talk, to say something. And in America, we have the freedom of speech. We can talk about what we believe. People can make announcements about what they believe. People can say um, their, whatever they believe in freely. We have the freedom of speech. We are allowed to give our opinion on something. An opinion is what you believe about something. Sometimes you can have a conversation with someone and they may say, well, I think this. And you say, well, I think that. Well, the freedom of speech gives us the freedom to say that we don't have to just say whatever someone else tells us to say, or we don't have to just believe what everybody else believes and say that. We can freely say and have an opinion on our own thing. That's the freedom of speech. Next we have what's called the freedom of the press. If you've ever read, if you've ever read a newspaper before, or if you were on the internet and you may have read an article before, I'm not sure if you've done that, but if not, it's okay. Or if you have a magazine that you like and you read something in the magazine, that is called the freedom of the press. That gives the people, that gives people the ability to write in magazines, to write in newspapers, to write articles online. They have the freedom to write and type up those different things because of the freedom of the press. If there was no freedom of press, people would not be able to write in magazines. They would not be able to post articles in newspapers. They would probably not even have these things, but the freedom of the press gives us the power to be able to do that. Now, just like with the freedom of speech, with the freedom of the press, since we have this freedom, it doesn't mean we should use it for bad things, but that we should use it for good things, especially since we believe in the Lord and we believe in Jesus. We should use the freedom of speech to talk freely about Jesus. We should use the freedom of the press to 
write about Jesus and so that people can read and also hear about the Lord. So we could use those freedoms for God's glory as well. Third, we have the freedom of religion that is on page nine. The freedom of religion allows us to believe and choose how we want to worship and who we want to worship. Now, the thing is, we know that we serve the one true living God. He's the only God. There is no other God besides him. Jesus is the Lord. And so because of that, we have the freedom of religion and we are able to worship Jesus, go to church like we want, read our Bibles like we want, pray anytime we want to pray. We can play worship music anytime we want. And we can do this because of the freedom of religion. And so people are not supposed to try and stop you from doing those things. They shouldn't try to uh, stop you from serving God. And if they do, you still continue to serve God. The freedom of religion. We are able to worship God. We are able to go to church, pray, and do all those things because of the freedom of religion. And then our last one is the freedom of assembly. Whenever we gather together in church or say if we go to a conference and we hear someone speak, we can gather together because of the freedom of assembly. The freedom of assembly allows us to gather together. Sometimes people can gather together like in a, a city. Maybe if there's an issue in the city, people can get together and try to talk about the problem and try to get it solved. And the freedom of assembly gives them that right to do that. No one can stop them from doing that because of the freedom of assembly. Okay, the four freedoms review. Freedom of speech, we can say, we can have an opinion on things, we can talk about whatever we want to talk about, but make sure that it's, it's wise things. Number two is the freedom of the press. We are able to type things in magazines, put articles in newspapers and online um, because of the freedom of the press. Third freedom is the freedom of religion. We are able to worship and serve God and pray because of the freedom of religion. And then the freedom of assembly allows us to gather together. Next part of our lesson is we want to learn what's called a compass. A compass tells us direction. Usually you find a compass on a map. If there's a map, you will see a compass usually at the bottom because it's helping you to know which direction. So this week we will learn only four directions, but next week we will learn four more directions that we will add to our compass. So the four directions are north, which means to go up. North means up. So whenever we talked about the students in different states, New York would be a state that's in the north. It's up there. Next, we have south, which is down. The south is down. That would be Louisiana and Georgia, South Carolina. They're further on the other side, but southern states, we'll say Louisiana is in the south. Then we have the east, which is going to the right. So if you're looking at a map, that would be South Carolina and Georgia. They are states that are in the east. And then we have what's called the west, which is obviously to the left. And we have California all the way in the last state. To the left, right before you get into the Pacific Ocean is California. So we have north, south, east is to the right, west is to the left. Again, north, south, east, west, north, south, east, and west. North, south, east, and west. Those are the four directions which we can find on a compass. That's our social studies lesson today. We learned about the freedoms. We reviewed our country, our state, our city, and also we learned the compass, which helps us with the direction. This was actually a review because you should be familiar with the compass already. So this is just a refresher to help you remember the four directions. Okay, you can read pages eight through 11 on today, and that's it.